Hello YouTube and Mr. Forks, what a lovely day it is. It's probably not lovely when you're watching this, but it's quite nice today. Um, some of the best visual effects are most certainly the ones that you don't notice. In my short film Amnesia, there was a shot in which um, Lily, or Florence, the character, looks over her shoulder to see this um, family picture. Now, when we were filming, it was an improvised film. We knew we wanted to make a film on holiday, where I did. Um, and I forced them to be involved, so I knew that we were going to have to face some problems which were, could only be solved through visual effects. For instance, she needed to look at a family of the uh, a picture of the family, but we didn't have a picture of the family, and we had a camera, obviously, because we filmed the film, but we had no way of printing, no way of doing anything. So the idea was to um, VFX the uh, picture in and I'm just going to do a simple breakdown into how I created this shot and how I put the picture into the shot. Now I'm not going to recreate the effect step by step but basically go over the idea behind solving it. What I did first of all was I exported a screenshot into Photoshop. Once I had a still image which looks something like this, I then um, <coughs> took the picture that I took on holiday as well and I cropped it and positioned it um, using um, either a warp tool or a 3D or I made it a 3D layer so I could position it so that it lined up with the shot below and then over the top of that I added in the original reflection if you look you can see that we did have some reflection on there so I literally um, trace that round with the pen tool and put it over the top with weakened transparency so you can see we've still got this uh, reflection going on here. The next thing I did, I added a glow layer which, um, which you can see I've animated a little and it moves around um, just so it looks like we do actually have some reflection going on. And obviously this is all looks lovely and cool but there is um, noticeable problems mainly that it's completely static and it kind of does look like a 2D image. Um, the next thing I did, I added some depth of field. You can see there's some blurring around here. I just um, used some adjustment layers. You can see I made this bit a little more out of focus. Um, and the idea was just to fake a little bit of depth of field so that the shot looked a little bit more impressive. I took, I pre-composed all of them layers into this composition, which as you can see has some kind of um, camera shake. The um, actual photo this still image which is the composition I used a video copilot preset which allows you to add some basic camera shake and I just set the uh, slider speed down to about 2 if anything it's over the top and if I were you I would get rid of that kind of speed just set it to about 1 just so it has a tiny bit of movement um, then I animated a camera this camera was used to uh, zoom in to try and create this uh, zoom effect. It was a very handheld style film so I um, animated a camera that zoomed into the footage temporarily went out of focus. The way I did the focusing was I just actually um, added a uh, adjustment layer that blurred the image temporarily and then unblurred it so it looked like the camera was zooming in and then refocusing. Just quite simple obviously. There you go, the fast blur. That's that layer and then I added some noise so that it looks like video footage as opposed to a still image. I'm a big fan of noise. Oh, I'm very popular. I'm a big fan of noise. Some people hate noise. Some people go out of their way to remove noise, but I quite like it in my films. I always add it in unless it's a um, unless there's lots of noise actually in the shot, in which case it's disgusting and I hate it. I like to put it in, which makes no sense. So that, in a nutshell, is the basic idea of how I put this picture into here. You can see um, without the reflection, without the glinting over the top, it would not seem like it was there. It would look like an image had been stuck on it. The movement really sells the shot. It makes it look like you spent ages motion tracking and trying to fit it in. People are seeing how are you getting it to line up so well. Well, the bottom line is it doesn't line up so well. Well, it does, but um, you didn't have to do anything, you just animated this uh, this little wiggle thing going on. Uh, that's kind of it. I just wanted to go over how you can cheat stuff like this, how sometimes you don't need to uh, 
spend ages motion tracking and when you can get away with it do it because there's no point in spending forever motion tracking a shot that doesn't need to be motion tracked obviously you could spend an extra minute um, perhaps animating her thumb that will really sell the effect uh, but I didn't feel it was necessary for only like a 2-3 second shot but it was important to the storyline and I needed to get it in without the uh, facilities to print but obviously this works for stuff like sign replacement in which case um, you won't be able to print at all because unless you have like an A A0 printer which some people you might, I don't know save some money, do it on the computer but yeah, thank you for watching and I'll be back soon. I'm going to do some more visual effects breakdowns from my films and some more Cinema 4D. I know that was requested, so I'll be back soon. Uh, thank you for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe. Well, you can't rate anymore, can you? You can like it. If you like it, like it. If you don't, then um, it's going to be problems.